This calcium rich shell protects one of life's most majestic creatures. The unborn juvenile shorebird. All oh, the sights the egg baby will see. And then boom, they hatch. Aren't these baby killed their cute? From the moment they hatch, they're able to walk around just like their parents. Mama will wait around until they can fly, and then she buggers off and the little ones are on their own. Oh look, it's a spotted sandpiper! They start foraging right away because gaining food and mass is of the utmost importance to the shorebirds. Oh, and there's a bunch of dowagers foraging. Because they know they have a long distance flight only weeks ahead of them. And the lesser yellow legs catching a fish. The typical shorebird diet consists of mollusks, invertebrates, and crustaceans. Lesser yellow legs are one of the birds we'll focus on in this video. The lesser yellow legs is, is lesser than the greater yellow legs, but nonetheless an impressive shorebird. We'll call these two Pete and Sammy. Meanwhile, up in Iceland, a whole bunch of different bird species are getting ready for their migration down to southern Europe and Africa. Shorebirds have among the longest flights of any other species of birds in the world. Hope you've gained the fat resources necessary for this long and arduous trip. When the time is right, the birds, like this oyster catcher, will take off on their great migration. Bird migration is a regular and natural seasonal movement, often north to south among common flyways, which are the routes that the birds prefer to take. Migration is built into the genetic code, and they cannot resist the urge to take off and go. Fly they must, thousands of kilometers away. And same with the Wimbrill. These Wimbrel will migrate non-stop in a flight that lasts over 4,000 kilometers. That's 2,500 miles to you Americans. These birds will travel hundreds of thousands of kilometers in their lifespan. Back in North America, they also get the signal to fly. Like Pete and Sammy, our lesser yellow leg friends. Migration carries high cost in predation and mortality, including from hunting by humans, and is driven primarily by availability of food. Many birds choose to migrate during the night to help protect them from these issues. A combination of magnetism and ultraviolet light guard them along the way. Some bird species don't have as big of a migration route, such as this American avocet. Through resource partitioning, several different species may forage together in suitable habitats. The avocet has an upturned bill, which helps with resource partitioning. They can reach food sources unavailable to some of the straighter billed birds. Other birds, like this black necked stilt, they have special adaptations, like these very long legs, to help them walk around the marshy areas amongst the vegetation. Mm -hmm. 
conversación de ustedes va a salir en Buscando Fauna. Oh, and there's Sammy and Pete. They've made it down to their wintering grounds in Argentina. These birds have made quite a journey. It is amazing the vigor and ingenuity of these birds. And in the spring, they do it all over again. Way to go, guys. Absolutely majestic. Marvelous. Cheerio. All right, folks, so I hope you enjoyed that short video. If you're looking for a more in-depth look on bird migration, I urge you to check out our friend John Jackson's video on his YouTube channel, Ecotasia. It features uh, clips from this video, his own clips, and clips from like a bunch of other YouTubers. So if you're looking for like the definitive guide on bird migration, make sure to check out that video. We'll leave a link in the description below. Stay fly. Bye.